Hello and welcome. Thank you so much for checking out my channel. My name is Shane Walls and I make my living as a fine art nature photographer who truly depends on his tool watches when I'm out in the field. And right now I'm out here in Yosemite National Park with my Rolex Explorer 2 and coincidental enough, we're going to go do some exploring here in Yosemite National Park. Now, we came out here for a storm. The storm never quite hit or never quite materialized. And now we're kind of in a in a little bit of a, not a funk, but I mean, still absolutely gorgeous here, but we're in a little bit of a middle where we got snow, but it's melting. It doesn't look all that great at the moment. The temperature's up. It's actually gonna be, the high is gonna be 50 today. So we might get some snow melt creating waterfalls. So you never know, <laughs> you can't be being in Yosemite. So let's go explore and see what we can find to photograph. So with the current weather conditions, no clouds, blue sky, the three day, four day old snow, it's not looking its best. I think our best bet from a photographic point of view is the waterfalls. This warmer weather is melting the snow, so the waterfalls are going pretty well. So I think the plan is for this week, we're up here in Upper Pines. I'm just gonna follow the Merced River down through the valley, a different part each day, capturing all the waterfalls and just seeing what else lays out there and maybe we'll get some detail shots. We might do later in the week, we might drive a little bit farther away from the valley, but still, since it is, we're in January here, there's still a lot of road closures. So valley is pretty much the only thing that's 100% open at the moment. So let's play it by ear, but for now, we're just gonna follow the Merced River down, as well as there's a path that's dog friendly. So I can take my dog with me on this one. Now, if you are in Yosemite, a must stop is Yosemite Falls. And you can see here, I'm, I turned my phase back to black and white. So I captured a black and white image just showing how bright, because I waited for the perfect time with the sun on the waterfall to make it really pop with the water going white, obviously, because it's moving down. So that's the brightest point. But I really wanted to show the dark forest that you have to hike to, how beautiful it is to get to the waterfall. And this is kind of a fun little fine art photograph I'm playing with. What impresses me the most about my Rolex Explorer 2 is situations like this. We're well within its parameters, temperature parameters that this watch can handle. But the way the temperature changes so quickly here from hot to cold, we're at the end of January now. And when I'm sitting in the sun, charging up my solar battery, my solar panel, you know, relaxing, having a beer, that the watch sitting in the sun, it's well over 100 degrees on that watch. At night, it gets all the way down into the single digits here. That's a huge fluctuation for a watch. And this watch is keeping day accurate time. That is incredible for an automatic mechanical watch with that big of temperature shift to keep that accurate of time. To put it into perspective, I had my Omega Seamaster up here probably about two or three years ago with similar conditions. In normal conditions, you know, back at home, it probably held about two to three seconds fast a day. Got, I need another Omega in my collection. I missed that watch. Anyway, when I brought it up to here with these similar conditions, it went to plus six seconds a day just because of the fluctuation in temperature, the quick fluctuations in the matter of hours. Because just if I'm, you saw me hiking without a shirt on, it gets hot in the sun. Right now, just hiking, it's probably about 80 degrees in the sun. In the shade now, I'm getting pretty cold and need to actually add another jacket. That's how quickly it, the temperature shifts here. And to keep day accurate time, if we really look deep into it, it's probably about a quarter second fast. 
that's incredible under any conditions, let alone these kind of extreme conditions with that huge fluctuation in temperature. It absolutely amazes me how tough and accurate this watch is in these kind of conditions. Now this is what accounts for those big temperature fluctuations. Right now, the weather report's telling me it's 55 degrees out. Obviously it's not because I'm sitting here in a t-shirt and it's really hot because I'm in the direct sun. That means if I'm in the direct sun, the watch is in the direct sun. So it's taking on all that heat. As well as the temperature said, or excuse me, the weather report said the high today was supposed to be 55, 60. The low was in the teens. We're gonna be in a cold campsite in the shade all day. So it's actually be colder than that. So this is where we're getting those huge fluctuations in temperature. And since our campsite spends most of the time this time of year in the shade, I'm using this time to have a little cup of whiskey and charge up my batteries with our solar panel. But the watch is in all this, the hot, the cold, and that's why it is so incredible how accurate of time it is keeping with these big, huge fluctuations in temperatures. So like I've mentioned throughout this video, the weather isn't quite cooperating with us. No clouds, no real drama or anything, so to speak, here. And the snow is a little past prime, so to speak, to be nice. So what we're going to do, we're going to head over to Bridalbell Falls. I've, this time of year, there's a special time where the light just kind of skims across it. And I'm hoping to capture that in kind of a fine art, black and white kind of way, just to capture the white of the water falling and everything else in shade. Let's hope we can get it. Usually the sun just kind of creates a line that goes up, which isn't all that interesting, but if we do hit it right and we are able to capture something, the light just shooting across the waterfall, just hitting the water itself, could be pretty epic. So I made my way over from the Reset River to Bridal Veil Falls, which again, like Yosemite Falls, if you're in Yosemite, you gotta visit this waterfall, it's epic. But I timed it after being here quite a few times, right at this moment, the sun is just kind of piercing across it. So you just get a little bit of white in the actual waterfall. So I'm having a fun little black and white photography time with this to get this fine art photo of the beautiful water falling down. I'm sorry for the sound if there's getting mist on the lens. The waterfall is just, it's an epic sight. There's no other way of saying it. And to capture this in the fine art way I am, it's just, it's a fun photograph to try to get. And I think I got a great shot. So usually when I'm capturing a photograph, I like this long exposure, really feel motion in the photograph. This one, I'm not gonna do that. I want it sharp. I wanna see every little droplet of water falling from this waterfall. So with the long exposures, I use my watch to time them. This is a 500th of a second. Not gonna use my watch on this one. I'll let the camera handle this. There's so much mist. I have to all the time keep cleaning off my lens because there's nothing worse than getting a great shot and your lens was dirty. But every time I'll clean off the lens and I found myself lenses clean. I just wait for the way I want the water to fall because I want just that, I want the kind of the soft, I'm doing a very fast shutter speed here to freeze the water, just to give that extra look of just that beauty. Everything's frozen, the light's just piercing across the waterfall. So like right now, oh, you can't see from here, I'll put it up on the screen, but just, I'm getting some gorgeous shots. when you ever have the chance to go photograph any beautiful place, you take it. Might not be the best time of year, might not be the warmest, the weather might suck, but you can get epic shots like this. And that's why I'm just so excited 
take every chance I get to get out in nature and have fun with it. I hope you can hear me or even see me with all the water hitting the lens. Such, I, I, I just can't put into words how excited I am to witness this first off and be able to capture it, share it with you, and just show you the brilliance and beauty of nature all times a year, all over the place. You just gotta go looking for it. So I know this is vertical, sideways, the only way I can get both me and the waterfall on the shot, but just, I just can't, again, say how much, how epic this is. And be able to do this with the Rolex Explorer 2, my dependable forever tool watch. I'm just so excited. Share these adventures, and now every time, even 30 years into the future now, all these nicks and everything I get on this watch, I'm gonna look at it 30 years, 40 years, hopefully, let's, let's finger cross for 50 years. And remember these kind of moments, because this is what it's about. It's these kind of moments that you just, everything comes together. You're not expecting much, but when you get it, it's that much more special. And just, Mother Nature is incredible. I tell you all, I highly recommend get out, experience it as much as you can. I'm talking with my hands, I'm too excited. I'm gonna go have a drink and relax at the campsite. I mean, this is it. This is the power, this is the wonderment. This is just the awe-inspiring moment of nature. It just goes to show you how much we need to protect these places in our world, this environment, these kind of things. We need to protect it because this is just an amazing feeling and there's nothing else like it. There really isn't. On that note, I'm gonna end this video. Always end on a high note. That was an incredible photograph. Everything came together. Beautiful light, the waterfall. It's, it wasn't too much water. It was just a perfect amount and just how the light came across. I'm going to go out and say that's one of the best photographs I've gotten here in Yosemite. Just beautiful. I'm really excited about it. Back to the watch. We've been here over six nights and with the huge fluctuation in temperature, this is kept pretty much day accurate time. If you really go into minutia of it, it's probably about a quarter second fast over 24 hours, but that's no small feat for a mechanical watch. That is pretty impressive over six days to keep day accurate time in such fluctuating temperatures. I'm very impressed with the Rolex Explorer too. Thank you so much again for watching. I really do appreciate it. If you wanna see more of this, hit subscribe, give us a like. Thank you again for watching. There's a lot more coming. Cheers. Sorry for the on-camera audio here. I wasn't expecting to film. I'm doing an exploratory eight-mile hike. I didn't feel like bringing my 60-pound bag of gear with me on this one. But real quick, I noticed my Rolex Explorer 2, even like right now where I've been kind of hiking uphill at altitude, I'm getting really sweaty. This never moves around on my wrist, which I really like. My Submariner is set the exact same way, fitted the same way. Even when I get sweaty, that kind of starts sliding around. I'm not sure if it just because it's a higher, it's a little bit thicker of a watch, so maybe it's got more weight on the top to move around. This is a little bit thinner. I don't know what the difference is, but a great thing about this watch, when it gets sweaty, not to be gross, sorry, it just it sticks to one place on my wrist, and I really enjoy that about this watch.